You ready to go? Okay, first part, the business. Um, welcome and good afternoon uh, to the monthly Parkinson's Resource Center Telehealth. Uh, we'd really like to thank St. Luke's for hosting us um, again this month and always. We'd like to thank Northwest Parkinson's Foundation for their partnership, and we'd like to also thank the many grantors, uh, Empire Health, Albertsons, um, Medtronic, uh, Teva Pharmace or Neurosciences, and all of our local uh, contributors who make this happen because this is a great program. It goes out to 21 sites. Hopefully they're all uh, signed in today. But, um, and I just want to thank you for coming today. Uh, and real quick, I'd just like to introduce our uh, president-elect who has uh, joined us today. The PRC is changing over its board a little bit. And John Cahill is here. And he is our president. And he's going to wave. And hopefully you can see him, or in our president-elect. Um, the business part, uh, please hold the questions until the end, um, because if you ask me questions in the middle, I'm going to completely forgot what I, forget what I was talking about. And um, if you would boot your uh, microphones there at the uh, off-site locations until the question and answer. And when we, um, when we do go through the final attendance, I'll ask you for how many people are there at your site, and if you have any questions, and we'll do our best from there. So, um, nutrition and Parkinson's disease, I am Cindy Cook, and I am the resource director for the Parkinson's Resource Center. I'll explain uh, why, let's see, um, why is Cindy here today? Uh, in the last year, I have scheduled a nutrition uh, dietitian expert to come twice, and it hasn't worked out. I just found out at the beginning of this month, and instead of canceling it or Try, trying to figure out somebody else. Um, I said, okay, I'll try it. We'll see what happens. Um, and I think what I figured out is nutrition is a really broad subject. Nutrition is different for every single person. And I can have somebody come in and talk about nutrition and it'll be helpful, but I'm gonna do my best to focus it towards Parkinson's disease today. So we'll see. Um, so actually eating for Parkinson's disease and uh, one of the bases for my presentation today is uh, Catherine Holden's Eat Well, Stay Well with Parkinson's. We have a copy of this in the PRC. We have a downloadable copy, and we can print out. It's a really great book. It also comes with its own cookbook. Um, and so I, we have things like this in the Parkinson's Resource Center as a resource for you. And again, I have it for download and I can print off pages and information for you and send them out, so just let me know. But So this is the basis, and we're gonna work on what I, what I know too. And so it says, Cindy Cook, uh, been cooking highly processed food for people since age 13, and that is absolutely the truth. And if this is bothering people, let me know. Uh, my microphone. Um, I have an AAS in hotel and restaurant management, so I went from cooking food for my family to cooking food for people in restaurants. And I did that for the first part of my career out of high school. And then um, several years ago, I got a degree in organizational leadership at Gonzaga, had been working in nonprofits for uh, about five years and finally decided to get a degree that said I could do it. And then um, the RD I put behind my name, I apologize for taking liberty. It's not registered dietitian, it's registered dieter. Um, yes, and you read that right. So, um, registered dieter, I'm going to try not to bore you too much. I'll get past this as quick as I can. But like many, I have been dieting since I was a teenager. Now I eat to live. Um, I don't eat. I, I, I don't live to eat, which is a hard distinction. Um, it took, oh, 38 years for me to get to that point. So um, I started learning about food while working at, at yeah my first spell check, uh, working at a food bank um, while giving food to the hungry. And it was the largest food bank in the Inland Northwest. We served four to 6,000 people every month. And uh, I started to look at the food that was coming in and the people that were coming in. And there was a lot of really hungry people, but they might not look necessarily like what you would think. They look like all of us, everyday people. But sometimes you think of starving or hungry is thin and other things, and they weren't. So I started looking at food. And that, during that time, I was having my 
own issues too. So now I eat to lessen pain and I'm outing myself right now. I have fibromyalgia. I've been diagnosed with that two years ago. IBS, severe gluten, soy, and egg intolerance. So forgive the language, but my doctor saw that and said, damn, you can't eat anything. So that's not true. I can enjoy a lot of really good foods. But again, um, Eating for Parkinson's Good Resources, the book that I already showed you, The Eat Well, Stay Well. Then there's this book. And now I am not advocating a paleo diet. Everything works uh, its own way for everybody. But this book right here, it's about a $40 book unless you get it on Amazon. It's called Practical Paleo. It's an amazing book. It goes through everything from neuro, uh, neurological to fibromyalgia to pregnancy to just wanting to lose weight, but it talks about nutrition, it talks about vegetables, it talks about your body. It doesn't limit it just to the paleo diet, and if you don't know what the paleo diet is, that is going back to our roots and eating basically what you could eat when you were a gatherer or forager. Um, so those, and then also Nutrition MD Online is a really good place to go for Parkinson's, for whatever you're looking at. Um, I had found a lot of really good information on some things that we're going to talk about today. And then the National Parkinson's Foundation website, and hopefully ours will be like this also too, you can go on there and watch hour-long presentations um, about nutrition, about caregiving, about, and it's all free. And so you might try that one out too. Um, the legal part. Please remember we are not your doctor, um, that we are having, I'm going to have fun with this topic because that's the way I am about things. Um, everything has been researched from a reputable source, but this is not a replacement for your doctor or the experience your doctor has or a prescription he might give you or she might give you. If you have questions or concerns about health and nutrition, please ask your doctor, um, registered dietitian, somebody that you could go to. And nutrition is different for absolutely everyone. These are basics that I hope you can build on. Um, we're talking about dehydration and constipation today, um, that protein concern in PD medication, gluten, because we are pretty sure you are all, you're going to ask, and uh, coconut oil and water, because you might ask, and it's been in the news. And dehydration, um, like right now. Um, I don't know how many of you know this, but I think it's about... 60% of the time, excuse me, and that wasn't just a prop, I'm really thirsty. Um, about 60% of the time, if you feel hungry, if you drink water first, it, it's not, and it's not a way to diet, but it'll actually satiate your hunger because most of us in some way or another are dehydrated. It's just the way it is. We don't drink enough water. Many of the things that we eat um, have... Uh, diuretics in them, coffee, tea, natural. Um, so it's not to, I'm not saying to stop them, but so one tip for every beverage you drink that is not water, coffee, tea, juice, etc., drink a glass of water because many of the things we have have built in diuretics like tea and coffee. And you know what? I just remembered that I never ran the spell check, so forgive me and point it out if you see it. Um, so if you drink a glass of cranberry juice in the morning, which is really good for you, little ways of along, Try and drink another glass of water to, to kind of balance it out. Um, try for six glasses of water a day. Find, so with Parkinson's, we have challenges. Um, and I'm going to say we. I don't have Parkinson's, but I'm going to say we. We have challenges with um, shaking, with movement, with things being hard to open. And so find a water, water bottle that works for you. And I... Um, I'm going to recommend a smart water bottle. And I don't know if you've seen these. I know I'm, I am very conscious of green earth and things like that. But you can reuse this 20, 30 times. You don't have to do it just once. And what's really nice about this is after you tackle the little tab on the side, and hopefully you can get somebody to do that for you if you can't, it's a really good bottle. It's not going to spill. It's small. You don't have to ca take care of a straw. You don't have to suck on it. You can just lift it up and drink out of it. And you, once you put it on, it's not going to it's not going to spill, and it can be with you all day long. And it can fall off of a walker. It can sit in your car. It can do whatever, and it's going to be okay. And again, so we there's water bottles of all different types, and you should pick one that works for you. But I recommend something like this, and I actually keep the tops of these to use them on other ones, and they're really durable and they work really well. But something like this to make 
drinking water easier because um, it's hard. You don't think about it. The other thing um, to kind of set a goal for yourself with water is a filtration system, and this is a, one of those, and there's a lot of different types. I just picked this one up at Albertsons. Um, they have the other kinds there too, but um, a goal you might make for yourself is to try and drink one of these in a day. Now, you might be thinking, Cindy, I am going to just slosh when I walk. Yeah, it happens. It really does. I've heard myself when I've been walking. Um, but one thing you can do with that, we want you to keep moving with Parkinson's. Medication works great. We, you know, eating really good works great, but movement and exercise is also a really big part of it. And we want you to keep moving. So you can kind of think of as every trip that you have to go to the bathroom, just one more step towards keeping moving. And uh, another thing with medication, you might think about drinking it during your high time of your medication. And you know more about that than I am, but than I do. But let's say you take your medication three times a day, and you're this most effective three hours after you take it or however, you want to try and drink your water as much as you can then so that it, you have a better ability to get to the restroom. You know, you don't have to race or run. And, um, oh, look at, see, I found another, I found a spell check. Um, being hydrated will assist with avoiding constipation. And that's the next one. And we're going to have a little bit of a Dr. Oz moment. Not everybody likes to talk about constipation. Um, <laughs> But two things about it that, and I never even thought about it, and I've been asked this question for years because of the IBS, but two things um, about it. Constipation means that you haven't had a bowel movement in three or more days, and constipation means straining to go to the bathroom. You don't want to do either one of those because, or both of those togethers, um, <laughs> and sorry, because I think this is hilarious, but there is a saying that says you are what you don't poop. Forgive the saying. But if you think about that, if you're not removing toxins from your body, which is why we go to the bathroom in the first place, then you're going to get sicker. It's going to do things. It's going to wear you down. It might cause other things to happen beyond the Parkinson's. Um, and I literally just thought about this, and forgive me because we are not cats, but my daughter's cat. She has a Himalayan seal point ear or whatever. Started having problems with this the other day. He actually got stepped up. He couldn't go to the bathroom and he, he almost died. Now that's not gonna happen here because he's a pet and he couldn't tell us what was going on, but when your toxins stay in your body, you can get sick. So we wanna rid them out, so water is gonna do that. Um, if you are constipated and have tried different remedies and they're not working, contact your doctor. Um, get your fiber, fruits and veggies. Um, I have a couple of veggies up here, but you know, things with color, and I'll mention that, I'll say that many times. Soluble fiber options like Metamucil and Benefil, and there's many different things. Take a natural laxative product with Senna. So um, this one, here's one right here, and it's called Super Colon Cleanse because cleansing is such a big thing right now. But it's actually, it, once you go beyond the name and you read the label, what you want to do is you want to become the best label reader that you've ever heard of when you start thinking about your nutrition. And this one says uh, 140 milligrams of Senna per, capita, per capsule. Senna is the key word there. Um, Senna is natural. It's... Um, and non-habit forming, I heard that out of the mouth of a doctor just a couple weeks ago. We went to, my dad and I went to the doctor and we were asking about it and he said it's not habit forming. It's, um, it's much gentler and you can take it when you need it. Another thing that I don't know, I didn't put it up here, but I don't know if you've ever heard about, but vitamin C is a really good natural laxative and, um, and it's really good for you. So uh, I generally take it in the chewies because there's colds going around and things like that. So I, I am kind of a vitamin C freak because I don't take anything else. I will back up a little bit. I don't take any medication for anything that I have. I stopped taking medication a year, a year and a couple months ago. So um, everything that I do, I do out of food and mood. So um, this, but this is one of my favorite things is vitamin C for this and just for every day. Um, flaxseed. I probably should have put a picture up about it, but um, flaxseed 
are really great little seeds that look like sesame seeds. They're really easy to use, and you can put them on almost anything. Uh, the salads that you don't get a lot of flavor out of them, so they're not going to um, change the taste. But if you do put them on salads or you put them in yogurt, they're very good. They're very small. They're not going to bunch up or things like that, but they're a really good source of fiber. And um, yeah, Ruth, yeah, thank you. Ruth um, in our audience just said that uh, you, if you don't grind them up when you put them on your food, if they're not already in food that you eat, because you can get flaxseed bread and things like that, um, if you don't grind them up, they'll just go right through you, which I guess if they're going right through you, then we're doing something good there too. <laughs> Um, so, and then I'm not going to do a lot with it though, but again, I'm going to go back to this practical paleo and <laughs> the things that you write down in a nutrition talk, but in here, there's a thing that's called a guide to your poop. And it's hilarious by the way, uh, again, the Dr. Oz moment, because you know, only Dr. Uh, Dr. Oz made it uh, acceptable to talk about this on air, but, um, there's in this book, and I will make copies and send them out. You let me know. But there's a page on here about all the different types you could have. And what's really amazing is um, being gluten, soy, and wheat, the gluten, soy, and egg intolerant, I, that was tested by medically. But there's ways in here that you can tell after eating something if you're having trouble digesting food. And so this is a really good thing. It just... Uh, it gives them names, Miss Toxic, Miss Swim Team, Miss Mu Miss uh, Muscles, Miss Show Off, Miss Ideal, Miss Runny, Miss Rocky. So we'll just leave it for right there. <laughs> but it is another, it's a really good thing, and I can make it available however you would like. You just let me know. Um, okay. So many, not all, people on Park with Parkinson's are on Cinemet or a... Um, medication with uh, levodopa L-dopa. And the effectiveness can and is reduced by the ingestion of protein. And since um, our incoming president is here and he knows a lot about that, hopefully I'm doing this right. <laughs> um, but uh, most popular recommendation is for you to take your medication um, a half an hour to an hour before your meal. But some people experience nausea even after the first few weeks of taking the medication. And to help with that, um, it, with the nausea, keep ginger ale, crackers, or things like vanilla wafers available. Um, if you choose to take your medication that much before, keep in mind that um, sometimes as that medication goes directly into your blood system, it can cause um, dyskinesia. And I don't know how many know about dyskinesia. Um, the best way for me to explain it is there was a time not too long ago that Michael J. Fox had some episodes on TV where his muscles were stiffening and he was doing some. And that's because that, if from what I understand right, again, I'm not a doctor, but from what I understand right, that's because that medication is getting into the blood system and kind of overreacting. So um, the another way to go about it, though, is to reduce protein throughout your day until your final meal of the day. Most people need about 30 to 45 grams of protein a day, but that might even be too much, depending on um, who you talk to. And so a sample way of doing that is breakfast with a whole wheat bagel or bread with peanut butter and jam. So peanut butter has protein in it, but when you're having a small amount, you're not going to get too much. It's not like the same as eating a steak or eating... Um, so, and then with breakfast, a piece of fruit, because we want to keep things moving, and a glass of juice, cranberry, something like that, and the food part of me, the, the natural part of me says try to have it with no sugar or high fructose corn syrup, and we're not even going to get into that today, because we could have many, many uh, times where we could get together about talking about sugar and high fructose corn syrup and things like that. Um, lunch. So that's why everything's up over here. And if you can't see it out there at the at the satellite sites, I have um, some things up here that we call in my family Mexican food. Um, but before I get to that, I do want to say, too, that there's some really great for breakfast. There's some really great bars and things. But what I again, what I want you to look at and what I want you to do when you're grabbing these, 
there's so many different ones and if you are going the low protein way you want to look at these bars like this this is high protein they put things in it to make it have more protein and this one's high fiber these are both pretty processed foods and so it's your choice to uh, pick which one you would want if this is the way you go. There's nothing wrong with these, but some people might react differently than other. And um, again, become a label reader because, uh, let's see, at the bottom of this, because they're all, um, most products are required to have it, this contains peanut, wheat, milk, and soy ingredients. So it's, and again, most people don't even react to those, but you're going to become an expert label reader. And it'll do, many things for you and it might make you not want to eat a lot of food. So um, what's for lunch? So I brought some things up here just to tease you and make you hungry. But um, let's say in your house it's you and your spouse. You have Parkinson's. Your spouse doesn't have Parkinson's. Um, I'm not going to go into the gluten part too much, but this type of meal, getting things ready. So I have peppers. I have onions. I have olives, I have beans, I have all natural sour cream, and I don't usually show labels, but I just, it's the all natural part because a lot of times you go, well, they say it's all natural. This has cultured cream milk and enzymes, and that's it. So again, it's one of those things a little bit more healthy in that it's not very processed. It's closer to the root of the system where it started. Um, we're not to that part yet. I can't stand rice. Sorry, <laughs> my rice is in a bag. So rice is a different thing, but rice is a really good filler also when you're not eating protein. Um, and then I have to admit, I brought guacamole from one of the best restaurants in town. Um, and you can ask me when we're off air or at the end where I got the guacamole, but guacamole is one of those really good fats and really good foods that will fill you up and that you can eat. And it works really well with a lot of foods in place of a sauce or instead of a dressing. It adds flavor and you're healthy. And, and it is a high calorie food, so remember that when you're eating it. But um, guacamole, avocados on their own, they're a really good um, addition. But uh, um, let's see. And then I have salsa. I can't find anything wrong with salsa. I've tried, um, except for that my body doesn't like it. So, um, but almost all the brands that you buy in the store, but you, forgive me if you find a bunch, have extra things in them, the gluten, the soy, the other things. And so um, take a look at the labels, but Pace does not. Pace has all, is all natural, um, so you're getting a lot of good things, a good flavor, and you can pick um, your spiciness quotient if you want. Um, and then um, blessings to the food world in that you can have chips that are just corn and a little bit of salt and a little bit of vegetable oil. Yay! So somebody like me can have those too, but you have to remember these are high in salt. So you're going to want to have water or reduce your salt intake. And actually salt is one of those things you probably, with the food, if you're eating processed food, you do not eat, need to add salt at all. It's so in there, um, but you can just remember to hydrate yourself and balance it out. So in my household, if I was being good, what I would do, and I'm, I'm really not going to go over the whole spiel here as far as everything I would put in, but I would take a corn tortilla if I was being good. By the way, I can have a little bit of uh, wheat and flour, but I... I know when I do, so, um, and then I would put onions, and pretend I'm putting rice and guacamole and sour cream in there, and then I'm going to wrap it up, and actually what you do, you could do this uh, ahead of time, you could actually make a couple for the whole week, but I'm going to put it on some foil, and I'm going to wrap it up. And again, pretend that I'm the one with Parkinson's and that I'm choosing to not do a protein during lunch. And I'm going to roll this up. Now, I can have this ready for later or I can have it ready for now. But one of the good things, if you have beans, which if you're, again, going off protein, you won't have beans. But if you have rice and you have vegetables and you have um, all these things in here, I just put it in foil I highly recommend one of these George Foreman grills. I am not getting paid to say that. I love them. They're very healthy. They, the fat rolls right off of them. But if you have one of these, or if you can do this on the stove, 
put it in there, stick it inside for 30 seconds once it's heated up. And because of the steam inside of the uh, tortilla, it actually heats it up and cooks it. And so you don't need to involve your microwave. You don't need to, um, you can do the whole process with basically without even turning on your oven if you get this prepped before at the beginning of the week. Now, the other part of this, if you have your spouse wants meat, you can keep everything ready and have a lunch for the whole week. You can cook your meat at the beginning of the week. I do do this at home, so I, I speak from experience. My kids walk into the into our kitchen, not right now because I don't have this set up at home right now, but it was last week. But I, my refrigerator might have, you know, all of these things, and the kids walk in and they grab the six things that they want or whatever it is, they build that up and they make themselves a snack. And it's the same way. It can work, it's Mexican, but it can work for every day. And um, you can call it a wrap if that makes you feel better. You can put meat in it, you can put beans in it, you can put rice in it, or you can put veggies in it and you can just make it your own. So it's one of the most um, uh, flexible type of foods. And then, okay, dinner time. It's time if you are choosing the low uh, protein way, but you're, it's dinner time, salmon. And of course, I am not an expert, so there are so many different things. There's so many different lists about what's available, but a really balanced meal, maybe if you take the sour cream and the bacon off of the potato, you know, it's a little bit more balanced, but you know, we're having a little bit of fun. And our goal here isn't to lose weight. I don't think, you know, we, we want to stay at a healthy weight, but salmon, broccoli, and a potato and enough to fill you that has rice on there too, but after during the <laughs> during lunch and you're having rice, if you're me, dinner time would be too much. So it's about being balanced. Um, protein is in what? Dairy, so any milk, any cheese, any yogurt. So I used to eat uh, slim, slim something, uh, mozzarella, it's one of the highest amounts of protein in any cheese that you can find, I guess. I didn't know that. Um, meat, chicken, turkey, beef, venison, and that's actually almost in order. Turkey and chicken, if you switch them, have the highest amount of protein in them of all the meats. So I didn't know that. I thought that was pretty interesting. Soy, tofu, nuts, some vegetables. This just killed me when I found this out, but you know what? It's okay. I got to count it because I was on a protein diet at the time. Peppers are full of protein. I mean, not like huge amounts, but if you, you can get something like three to five grams out of one pepper. If you have it in your lunch and it's just part of what you're doing here, it's not going to push you over the top of having too much and lower that effectiveness of that medication that you're trying to keep um, working at a good pace uh, throughout your day. Gluten. Um, I actually, I, I would, we'll pretend, Cindy, what if we want to go gluten? That's, you, that's one of you out in the audience asking me about that. Sorry, it works a little bit better in my brain that way. Um, gluten is a big question out there, and it's been out in the media. It's everywhere. Everything is high protein and high protein gluten-free and um it's up to you, and I. but what I wanted to say about it, if you have Parkinson's disease and you're on your medication and you, um, you're doing well with your protein and somebody says, hey, maybe you've try, you should try gluten for your inflammation, and we have somebody here who was telling me about this and we could probably learn a lot more from her, but uh, if you are, let's say in that morning when you ate your bagel or your piece of bread, and three hours later or five hours later, you have a reaction. And I, I don't want to go into it too much, but your stomach might start to hurt. You might have some issues. You might get bloating, gas, things like that. Then maybe you should check with your doctor about gluten and what that means for you. And then that's between you and your doctor when you're done. Um, but if that's not happening and everything is feeling pretty good with what you're doing with your protein or how you're eating, and it doesn't have to be a low protein. Again, everybody's different. Um, but if you are experiencing the bloating, the gas pain, the loose bowels, the constipation after eating gluten, talk to with your doctor about options. Because you can go gluten-free pretty easy. You just have to 
read a lot of labels and things like that. But once you get used to it, you find what works for you and, um, and you can move on. And so if you have more questions about gluten, again, that's one of those topics I could stand here all day and I don't know very much about it. So if I, we had somebody in a nutritionist who knew about it, um, we could be here many days. Uh, gluten is in what? Uh, everything. Um, gluten is, uh, and I'm sorry, <laughs> after, after long enough, uh, it feels like it's in everything. But And gluten, somebody did just say that uh, gluten is not only wheat, it's barley, it's oats, it's rye, it's, you know, there, it's a lot of different things. But gluten falls under kind of a big umbrella. And it's in bread, crackers, pizza, cookies, etc. everything my children and my husband like to eat. And it's in pasta, so... Every, the, the meal that we have at least once a week when my husband's off. Because, <laughs> you know, the presentation is, is about my experience. I'm kidding. Um, many processed foods. And um, if it's processed, I, we, well, you won't see cheese up here today. Shredded cheese. We love using shredded cheese because we're lazy at my house. Um, but you have to be careful with shredded cheese because they blow a starch into it. And it might be a potato starch or it might be a gluten starch and if you're really getting affected by it and you don't know what it is you can go and I'm not eating bread I'm not eating this but you've been having it and you're really sensitive to it check your shredded cheese because it might say corn or it might say potato starch it might say some type of starch the things that you find out gravies and sauces are almost always have some type of flour or something into it and there's other ways you can go and again I'm not going to go into all those desserts Darn it, ice cream is one of those. It's it, it doesn't fall under there, so that's one treat that I get. MSGs, and you can see, I don't think I have anything up here today that says MSG free. Oh, yes, I do. Rapid rice, whole grain brown rice, no MSG. Monos, what did you say? So, thank you. <laughs> Monosodium glutamate. My brain just went numb. Um, and then TVP, a textured vegetable protein. And while I am not here to scare you, I'm trying to give you information. Textured vegetable protein is in just about every meat that you eat out in the world of restaurants and especially fast food. And textured vegetable protein can either be gluten or it can be soy. And for me, both of those are... So, um, but Wendy's chili is very healthy for you. It's on, used to be on the heart healthy diet. It has beans and beef and this and that and vegetables. They put TVP into their meat, and it's a texture thing. Um, but if you don't have to worry about gluten or soy, don't worry about it. It's just making you aware what happens to our food. So, um, the last part, I had somebody, when I found out about this, uh, that I was going to be talking I was talking to one of our Dance for PD. Actually, it's our volunteer who does most of our coordinating with our Dance for PD. And she said, are you going to talk about co coconut oil? And I said, no, <laughs> because I don't know anything about it. But you know what? A couple things about coconut oil that I discovered as I was researching for this in the over last week. Um, so it's in the news. I'm not telling you anything new about that. Um, there's no evidence that's found right now that it isn't healthy for you. You can use it, and it's not going to clog your arteries. It's actually, there's an oil out there sometimes that they recommend called MCT, and it's an oil that helps keep the inside of your arteries a little bit um, slick, and coconut oil falls under that. Um, I did read, and I haven't tried it yet, so forgive me. Um, you'll have to try it on your own and then email me and let, you know, let me know. But when cooking vegetables and chicken, it adds, a, a, I guess, a really good flavor. It doesn't have a really potent flavor, but it adds a good flavor. And no research to date has been shown that it's harmful. So I said that I would, I would talk about it. Um, nutrition. Everybody is different. Everyone reacts differently to what they eat. Um, again, become a nutrition label reader. Uh, maybe that's the new thing that you read when you don't have when you have a, don't have a new book. Pick up here. It's just amazing what you can learn about what's on labels. Um, a nutrition dietitian expert recommendation that I've heard many times over the last 15 years that I've been trying to figure out what's going on with me and what I eat is when you shop in the store. I got all this at Albertsons, and a couple of these are from inside. But shop the outside of the store. The food on the, around the outside of the store 
is the closest to the first step in the process of, be- of food. So eggs, you know, it may have ride- rode on a truck, but they just came from the farm. Um, the vegetables, the fruit, the things that are, again, um, least processed usually. I know that I can think of some cinnamon rolls that are out there, and I can think of all the frozen things. So, you know, there's there are some things out there. Um, and But better yet, back to keeping us moving. You know, we're trying to stay moving with everything that we're doing. Spokane has a really great farmer's market downtown three days a week. And once you go down there and you're getting getting good, healthy food, it's at a pretty good price. So um, try and shop local. Try, um, you have not heard me mention organic. Um, again, that's a whole nother talk. Um, organic is, um, is a great thing if you can't, but um, a lot of things, so I'm gluten-free, and if I went to the store, there's this whole section now for gluten-free. Most of that is processed food, so there's other things in it for me. There's soy. So I try and stay away from that. I'd rather give, you know, for me, give money back to our local farmers um, and our um, local businesses. But um, read the labels and keep it in mind. And then sometimes as Parkinson's progresses or you don't have a car, or you can't get around, or there's something, you have an appointment, you can't do it. There's two things that I found, and I was actually looking into these before I ever found out about this process, but you can still get milk delivered to your home. It's still the milk bottles, just like you used to, but it's not a milk bottle, it's the carton, but it comes out of a dairy out of Spokane. They have milk, cheese, eggs, bread, and a bunch of different things, but that's at spokanemilk.com, and that one's specifically for Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, Northern Idaho area. This other one, fullcircle.com, is in eastern Washington, western Washington, northern Idaho, Alaska, and I bet you that there's other places in Oregon and Montana at our other sites. Guys, I'm not forgetting about you. But the full circle will um, deliver for, I think, as little as $25, $26 a week enough vegetables and fruit in combination for two people for a week. And it's all fresh. It's all coming from local producers. And it's so your money's staying local. But they also have beef, grass-fed beef, different beef. They have um, milk, eggs, cheese, again. So it's another way to go if you are not able always to stay to get out of the home. Um, that's another thing to look up. And I will have the information for you at the end. Um, and if you have discomfort after eating certain foods, avoid those and become an expert about your own body and food. And here are the resources from today. Again, the Parkinson's Resource Center, um, Eat Well, Stay Well, Practical Paleo. Again, I am not advocating doing a a paleo diet, but it's a really good book just overall. Nutrition MD, National Parkinson's Foundation website. And um, Washington APDA is another good website for Parkinson's. And Northwest Parkinson's Foundation is also another good local. And there's chapters in Montana and Oregon for those also. And you don't get to listen to me anymore. Except for now I get to ask questions, or I get to answer questions if you'd like. So um, if you would, if our... Uh, satellite sites would like to unmute their, let's see, I can do it right here. Can I still do it on this? Mm-hmm. Okay. Again, thank you for listening to me. I am not an expert. I do enjoy this topic because I've learned about it a lot, and I enjoy working with everybody, and I've learned a lot about Parkinson's, so thank you again. Okay, Anchorage, Alaska. Are you there? Yeah. Oh, I hear somebody. Uh, yes. We're here. <clears throat> There's nine of us, and uh, we have a question. Okay, what's your question? Oh, I'm sorry. I guess we don't have a question. Oh, you're teasing me. Just kidding. Well, sorry. thank you, everybody, for coming today. I hope that it was helpful for you. Billings, Montana. Billings, are you there? We have four people. Enjoyed your presentation. No questions. Thank you, Billings. You guys take care. We'll see you next month. Um, Chewila, Providence St. Joseph Hospital. Uh, 
Okay, Chuila. Okay, Clarkston, Tri-State Memorial Hospital. Hi, Cindy. We have 14 here today. Oh, and we, welcome. we have one request for you to explain a little bit more about going around the outside aisles of the grocery store. Okay, so when you go into a grocery store... That includes store, the deli. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can include the deli, but yeah, when you, and you do have to think about that too, but what I mean is uh, if you are walking, let's say where I got this food, I went to Albertsons um, and got this food, if you go into the store and you go off to the left and you stay around the outside aisle, you have frozen foods, which are a little less processed usually than the processed foods. I am just going crazy with noise here. Um, and then you go down and there's fruit juice and eggs and sorry look at I have it memorized <laughs> and then you have to skip over the cinnamon rolls and you go to the yogurt and you go to the milk and you go to the meat counter and then you the meat counter goes all the way down the back of the store and then vegetables and fruit and again the processed meat over in the vegetables and fruit so you might want to stay away from the processed meat and stay back with the with the butcher block but what I guess I'm trying to say is by staying at the outside of the grocery store you are staying closer to the first step of the of the food process um, if if the eggs were laid five days ago they were put in a carton they were sent to the to the store and they're fresh whereas if you shop inside you might what you're gonna find is you're gonna find more things in a box and this box will last you six months a year or whatever does that make sense I think so. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you very much. Okay, Coeur d'Alene. We have 14 and no questions. Oh, thank you, Coeur d'Alene. Welcome. Colfax, mm -hmm. Whitman Hospital and Medical Center. Col Colfax, are you there? Okay, Colville, Providence, Mount Carmel. We have five in, in attendance, and we have no questions today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming, everybody. Um, Dayton General Hospital. Okay. Um, it looks like Grand Coulee didn't check in today. Grangeville, Idaho, Syringa Hospital. Uh, Kennewick General Hospital. Uh, Miles City, Montana. Um, Hello? Yes, this is Miles City. Uh, we enjoyed your presentation, and uh, there's 13 of us. Oh, welcome, Miles City. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Moses Lake, Samaritan Healthcare. We have five people and no questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Pendleton. We have four people and a dog, and we have one question. Um, what was the name of the water bottle again, and how is it um, where it's ecology friendly? Well, okay, so the name of the water bottle is Smart Water. Um, and hopefully you can see it, Smart Water, and there's some that just have the twist on label, and then there's the one with these, the tops, but they're really, um, they're really secure when you close them, and they're pretty easy to open and close, and the ecological part of them is that you can use them 20 to 30 times. You don't have to use a new one every single time. So it is, there's, that's, there's other options. There's water bottles that you can use hundreds of times throughout the years, for all the different water bottles and I have fallen into oh you should buy this because it has a straw in it and everything this is the best one that I found and I keep this one around does that answer your question um, actually I was just wondering how it is ecology friendly you can use it like 10 times and then it does it break down the you plastic can you can recycle it just like all the other ones I guess that'll answer it Sorry. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is I'm choosing to be a little less green so I have something that works a little bit better for somebody like me who has a hard time keeping their water bottle upright 
um, and keeping the straws where I know they are and things like that. So I'm choosing a little less ecological and a little smarter for me, and it might work for you. Thank you for your question. And what's the dog's name? They might have checked out. Colby. Colby. Well, it's nice to have everybody and Colby. Thank you. Okay, Pullman, uh, Pullman Regional Hospital. Uh, there is only one person here. I would like to know if uh, I can just go to uh, Barnes & Noble or something like that and buy the practical polio book. And is yeah. there an ISBN? Um, yes, and you can call me for the ISB, and or I can, I don't know if you have a pen, I could read it to you right now. Um, the Barnes & Noble here in Spokane had that, I just bought this extra copy, this is my copy, and they had it in um, stock when I bought it over the weekend. So if you want to call me at the Resource Center for the ISBN number, I can give that to you. Does that help? Definitely. Okay. I, so call and ask for Cindy. I'm the only one there, but sometimes I forget my name. And thank you very much for making it into Pullman. Okay, Spokane. Walt, did you count? 20. We have 20 in Spokane. Do we have any questions? We do have a question here. I like to drink wine, and I'm wondering if I can drink wine with my medicines. Or if wine causes problems with, uh, or helps me with my Parkinson's, I hope the answer is yes. From what I read, wine does not have an effect on um, somebody with Parkinson's. I do not know if it has a reaction with the medication that you're on. There's several different. Ask your doctor about that. They find that the red in the wine helps for a lot of things. So I would ask your doctor, and I would keep it in moderation. Yeah. <laughs> One. <laughs> well, don't fill up one of these. Um, and yeah, in moderation. I, from what I read, and I don't know, John, if you want to answer that question, do you want me to just go with talk to your doctor? Yeah. Talk to your talk to your doctor about their recommendations. But red wine has a lot of um, beneficial things besides the being alcohol. Okay, so if your medication, when you get every time you fill it up and they give you your uh, side effects and everything with it, have somebody read that for you so you don't have to read. <laughs> um, but then have them tell you that what it says. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Uh, Tenasket, North Valley Hospital. Okay, Tenasket, Walla Walla, Providence, St. Mary. There's one person here, and I thank you for all the good information. Have no questions. Thank you for coming to Walla Walla today. Okay, that is the end, and I appreciate everybody coming and listening to your not expert, except for your expert dieter instead of dietitian. Um, thank you. I uh, I do have this power have this PowerPoint if it's helpful if it's helpful and uh, yeah. next month's speaker we have um, oh I'm gonna say his name wrong Dr Montine he's a research doctor out of Washington or University of Washington he's traveling over to Spokane to speak to our group and he's gonna talk about um, the research on the potential causes and hopefully the potential prevention of Parkinson's disease in the future. And so it looks like a really good talk, and I look forward to seeing everybody here who can make it and out at our other sites. Thank you very much. Dr. Montine. Thank you. Thank you. Now all I need is... Now, if this was just filled with wine. <laughs> I, you know what? I don't drink wine. Funny enough, my husband's a wine steward, and I, we joke because when we've been joking for 17 years now that he married me because he gets my wine, my chocolate, my dessert, my ice cream. <laughs> okay, thank you. And I have this beautiful food up here. 
if somebody would like to take the food with them,